Dear students, the new topic is the crystal oscillators or quartz crystal oscillator. The topic code is ELAC OSC S3V. Uh, the quartz crystal oscillator, uh, one of the most important features of any oscillator is its frequency, stability the stability in the frequency or in other words its stability to provide constant frequency output under varying load conditions okay so any variable load may affect the frequency so this will the prime uh, feature of the oscillator that it must be able to provide this stable constant frequency some of the factors that affect the frequency stability of an oscillator generally include variation in the temperature, variation in the load as well as changes in the DC power supply voltage which are the few factors, one of the factors. Frequency stability of the output signal can be uh, greatly improved by proper selection of the components used. Uh, for the resonant feedback circuits including the amplifier but there is a limit to the stability that can be obtained from normal LC and RC tank circuits. To obtain a very high level of oscillator stability a quartz crystal is generally used as the frequency determining, determining device to produce another types of oscillator circuit known as generally as a quartz crystal oscillator XO. When a voltage source is applied to a small thin piece of a quartz crystal, it begins to change the shape producing the characteristics known as piezoelectric effect. You are familiar with it, I have discussed in the class, the piezoelectricity, uh, piezoelectric effect due to stress and the strain, the voltage are produced across the opposite uh, the sides of the crystal, planes of the crystal and similarly if a alternating voltage is applied they vibrate, the change in the, the stress the, the stress and strain is produced inside the crystal which change, changes the shape of the crystal. This piezoelectric effect is the property of a crystal by which an electrical charge produces a mechanical force by changing the shape of the crystal and vice versa. A mechanical force applied to the crystal produces electrical charge. This is the typical uh, basic mechanism of the or the phenomena of the, the piezoelectric electric effect. The piezoelectric devices can be classed as a transducers as they convert energy of one kind to uh, into energy of the another kind electrical to mechanical or mechanical to electrical. This piezoelectric effect produces mechanical vibrations or oscillations which can be used to replace the standard LC tank circuit in the previous oscillators as we discussed. There are many types uh, different types of crystal substances that can be used as oscillators with the most important of those for the electronic circuit being the quartz minerals, uh, quartz crystals due in part of their greater mechanical strengths. The quartz crystal used in the quartz crystal oscillator is a very small thin piece of a wafer of a of cut quartz with the two parallel surfaces metallized to make the required electrical connections. Uh, the required crystal is embedded inside the two metal surfaces in order to provide the metallic conne uh, connections, electrical connections. Now the physical size and thickness of the f piece of the quartz crystal is tightly controlled since it affects the final or the fundamental frequency of oscillations. So the fundamental frequency is generally called the crystal characteristics frequency. Uh, let us now go into the further uh, rest we can read out the basic here uh, sorry the 
the, the, the resemblance or the, the how we uh, see the uh, crystal. This is the typical crystal, okay. Now, the quad crystal equivalent model we uh, present over here, which causes an oscillation inside the crystal and as a resonant frequency, how we get that. So, this, these are two metallic plates in which we embed or we uh, encapsulate or whatever sandwich the other quartz crystal. So, uh, this total quartz crystal is, can be now uh, represented as this equivalent circuit model. This so, uh, we have a parallel capacitor CP uh, which is due to these two uh, plates, metallic plates. Okay, so that represents the parallel plate capacitance of plates CP. That is easy to oh, be worked out by from the dimension of the these metallic plates which we have uh, uh, in, uh, connected over here. Rest inside the crystal. These are the parameters. The RS. These three components are connected in series. We uh, visualize that the different properties of the material of the crystal, the C S is a series resistor, L S is a series uh, the, the inductor, inductance and R S is the series resistance. This is now R S is the consider the friction of the crystal as the series resistance. The mass of the crystal is considered to be as a the, uh, the as a mass uh, the the inductance okay which has the obviously uh, because it changes its uh, shape and squeezes and we will consider as the elastic restoring force f is equal to minus k x over the, uh, sorry uh, the uh, elasticity will be aware uh, ls is the mass of the uh, spring uh, the, the the coil which represents the inductance and C S is the elasticity of the, the, the crystal which is the squeezing and the, uh, the, the stress and strain are produced and elasticity F is equal to minus K X which is the, the elastic restoring force that represents the, the, this uh, capacitance of the, uh, the this crystal. So, the, these two one is the series arm, one is the parallel arm. So, all together they will have the net impedance Z, net impedance which is a parallel combination of these two. These are connected in series and this is connected in parallel. There will be net effect series plus the this uh, one parallel component. So, the equivalent circuit of the, the equivalent circuit, equivalent electrical circuit for a quad crystal shows a series of one branch, one arm of that parallel circuit. It shows a series RLC circuit which represents the mechanical vibration of the crystal in parallel with the capacitance CP which represents the electrical connection of the crystal. Quad crystals oscillator tend to operate toward their series resonance. The equivalent impedance of the crystal has a series resonance uh, where CS resonates with the inductance LS at the crystal operating frequency. This frequency is uh, called the crystal series frequency Fs and as well as the series resonant frequency there is a second frequency point established as a result of the parallel resonance uh, created when Ls and Cs resonates with the parallel uh, capacitors Cp as shown in the figure below. So, here we have the, you can see this is the impedance, the parallel impedance that P and this is the frequency one can see. So, the, the series L, we can see the inductive reactance of, of the, the inductor which is connected in series is 2 pi F L S. This is the capacitor reactance which is connected again in the arm which is a series arm 1 over 2 pi F C and X C P. This is the parallel plates, two plates C P is the capacitor reactance 1 over 2 pi F C P. So, here we see that the, the with the increase in the frequency, the impedance decreases 
to the minimum at resonance this is the resonance for the series and the rs is the only uh, resistance when resonance takes place the rs the only left resonance uh, all the other uh, the the xc and xl are cancelling the effect of each other so we have the resonance equal this this is actually if you take the voltage the voltage will be the maximum obviously because the the the, or the current will be maximum and you can see the the uh, series uh, fs point over here resonant point another uh, in case of parallel what we have as we increase the frequency the impedance increases so impedance increase is a, this is a p f p point over here uh, along with that now if we were, uh, calculate the z of the series branch zs is given by r the the magnitude of that is r s square plus x l minus x c whole square square root while the zp branch will be uh, obviously zs plus uh, and the xcp parallel combination will give you the zp which is zs into xcp uh, divided by the zs plus xcp where xcp is obviously the uh, the, the second branch which is the, the the metallic plate two plate capacitance capacitance of that which is xcp So, rest you can see the details are given. Let us go to the, to the crystal reactance against frequency. Let us see this now, this uh, figure. <coughs> Here we have the crystal reactance, this so positive and negative. The plus sign is the inductive reactance, the negative phase is which is out of phase 90 degree here the capacitor reactance and this is the frequency in megahertz so if you can see that the by increasing the frequency we have the series resonant point fs over here and for the smaller frequencies we we see that the that is the uh, inductive reactance is small or minimum but as the the frequency increases we say the inductive reactance increases as well <coughs> This is the uh, FP for the resonant uh, parallel resonance. At the smaller resonance, the because now the parallel uh, resonance uh, give us the the its minimum uh, the is maximum over here, and it decreases as again uh, frequency increases, and we get this curve, the the two curves for the uh, crystal. Uh, the uh, as an oscillator series resonant frequency the formula is uh, typical given l f s is equal to 1 over 2 pi l s c s this is uh, the series branch uh, part while the parallel resonant frequency is given by f p is equal to 1 over l s into this is the equivalent uh, c of the total crystal which is the cp into cs cp plus cs the uh, of the whole crystal that is the typical of uh, uh, the resonant frequency relationship let's now take on a typical example of the quartz crystal oscillator a quartz crystal has the following values rs is equal to 6.4 ohm cs is equal to 0 0.099 picofarad and ls 2.5 uh, millihenry if the capacitance across the terminal cp is measured at uh, as a 28.6 picofarad calculate the fundamental oscillating frequency of the crystal and its secondary resonant frequency the crystal the crystal series resonant frequency fs is given by 1 over 2 pi ls putting the respective values we will be able to get the 9.987 megahertz while the crystal parallel resonant frequency fp is given by 1 over 2 pi l s c p c s over c p plus c s putting the respective values and we will be able to get the fp is equal to 10.005 megahertz we can see that the difference between the fs between the fs the crystal fundamental frequency and the fp is 
at about 18 kilohertz that is the 10 megahertz minus 9 10.005 megahertz 9.98 7 megahertz however during the frequency range the uh, q factor polarity factor of the crystal is extremely high because the inductance of the crystal is much higher than its capacitive uh, resistive values the quality factor of the crystal at the series resonance frequency is given by crystal oscillator's quality factor as q is equal to xl over r 2 pi fl which is omega which is um, xl is equal to omega l which is 2 pi fl over r putting the respective values what we get the quality factor approximately equal to 25000 so you can see the details of the quality factor and its uh, comparison with the various frequencies and now let's discuss the typical culprit uh, culprits quartz crystal oscillator now how we use this in the uh, this crystal inside the oscillator crystal oscillator circuit are generally the uh, constructed using bipolar uh, transistor or FETs this is because although operational amplifier can be used in many different low frequencies uh, oscillator circuit operational amplifier just do not have the bandwidth to operate successfully at the higher frequencies suited to the crystal above 1 megahertz the design of the crystal oscillator is very is similar to the design of the culprit oscillator we look uh, at it in the previous tutorial except the lc tank circuit with, uh, that provides the feedback oscillations has been replaced by the quartz crystal as shown below and this is the typical uh, culprits quartz crystal oscillator the rest as you can see is the same which is the cell bias uh, amplifier uh, uh, so common uh, in this case uh, the in the meter we have got the here the crystal uh, is attached to the uh, the culprit uh, splitted capacitors and which uh, produces the oscillations and the, the oscillation frequencies we can control further the 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 resonant frequency with the variable capacitor this is additional capacitor has been introduced this is the typical crystal uh, 1 to 5 megahertz and that is the corporate split capacitor which provides the feedback c2 is now the part which is providing the feedback to the uh, input at the base base biasing is being the is been done with the vcc plus 9 volt in this case this is the capacitor the collector resistor this is the base potential divider network which provides the base uh, current to the bias the uh, the amplifier this is the again emitter resistor typical emitter resistor so that is the typical uh, example of the culprit crystal oscillator this type of the crystal oscillator are designed around a common collector emitter follower amplifier the although this is the not the common this is the common uh, emitter in this case the r1 and r2 resistor networks as i already uh, uh, described that you can just read out uh, the details the circuit diagram of a bow culprit crystal oscillator shows that the capacitor c1 c2 shunt the output of the transistor which reduces the feedback signal therefore the gain of the transistor limits to the maximum value c1 c2 the output amplitude should be kept low in order to avoid excessive power dissipation in the crystal otherwise uh, could destroy itself excessive uh, by excessive vibrations so with this we reach to the end of this topic and uh, I hope you have learned the basic uh, phenomena and the circuitry involved in it uh, see you next time with a new topic till then goodbye and thank you